Well, good morning, and welcome to Good morning, and welcome to uh, First Baptist Church in Grayton, California. Now, for those of you who are looking at the bulletin and you're wondering why I have a picture of the tomb and the three crosses and the and it says He is risen, as we know, that Sunday was uh, Easter Sunday, and it's just a reminder that He is risen indeed. So let's go ahead and go to uh, the Lord in prayer. Most Heavenly Father, Lord, God, you are so wonderful and you are so awesome. We adore you, Father, and we try to do everything so that they will find you. Lord, be with all those who don't know you, Father. Lord, help each one of us to uh, be used by you uh, to uh, help those who don't know you to come to know you, Lord, as we know you as our personal Lord and Savior. Lord, for all those who on a Sunday are not attending a worship service, who um, identify as being in Christ, would help them to realize that it's important that the um, church family uh, gets together and that we fellowship with each other and that we worship you together, Father. Lord, as uh, Michael and I lead the service today, uh, be with us and guide us, help us to remember, as always, to stand behind the cross, not to stand in front of the cross. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Amen. All right, so the first song that we're doing is, uh, we've done this song a few times, usually just once a year. It's I Am the Resurrection, and we're going to do it a cappella, and the words to it are, are in the bulletin. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. I have come to bring the truth. I have come to bring you life. If you believe, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. In my word all men will come to know. It is love which makes the spirit grow. If you believe, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live a new life. Keep in mind the things that I have said. Remember me in the breaking of the bread. If you believe, then you shall live. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, will live a new life. Amen. He indeed is the resurrection, and those of us who believe in him will and do live a new life. Uh, join me in the Gloria Padre. Uh, the words are right there in your bulletin. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, and now is till the end, world without end. Amen. Amen. And in the collective of the day, O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, and then number 135 in your hymnal, Nothing But the Blood. 135. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. That's in not Hebrews 9, 22. Okay, it's time for um, our tithe and offering. Uh, most Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for all that you provide. Lord, we know the needs that we have. We know the wants that we have. Lord, you know the things that we need. And you provide them as we need them. You would help us to remember that we need to wait on you and not go out and provide for ourselves, but to allow uh, your movement, Lord, and allow you to provide. Thank you, Lord. The, the sermon today. is out of Genesis 41, verses 37 to 42, and it's entitled, Exalted After Suffering. Yes. Okay. 
Good morning. It's a beautiful day today. I hope you have wonderful plans. It's been also planning on spending a little bit of time with uh, with Jesus, which if you're here or you're watching this, then, then you are. Uh, those of you that can notice, I'm wearing a t-shirt today and it's got an emblem right across here. It says, Bill Glass Behind the Walls. Yesterday, my wife, Sunshine, and I, with 43 other teammates, went to a level four yard of Full Summer Sacramento State Prison. And this is a nationwide prison ministry. They, the Bill Glass Ministries uh, Behind the Walls uh, goes to prisons all over the United States, actually sometimes in other countries. Now remember, Jesus said what we are to do to the least of these or what we do to the least of these, we do to ourselves, or rather to him. Well, I, would, I must have had too much sun in my eyes yesterday. So Jesus said we do to the least of these, we do to him. He also said that when he was in jail, we visited him. Now to exalt somebody is to raise them or lift them up. In prison ministry, we exalt Jesus by lifting him up to the unsaved. Think of the life of Joseph. His father entrusted him to run the family business. This is significant because he was the 11th son of 12. And in that culture, the order would be the oldest first. Now we know he was put in charge because he was given a coat of many colors or depending how you translate the, the, the scripture, a coat with long sleeves. And the thing is, it designates one who is in charge. So he was, in a sense, exalted above his other brothers to be in charge of the family business. As child 11, again, this is against culture. Now, the brothers rejected his appointment by their, by their father, Jacob. And they weren't too subtle about it, so they contemplated murdering him. But instead, they just decided to sell him to slavery and make some money on the deal. Now, his owner in Egypt... The ultimate owner was the captain of the Pharaoh's guard, Potiphar. There he distinguished himself so well in Potiphar's household that he was put in charge of everything that Potiphar owned. But then we have a problem that came up, suffering. Potiphar's wife lied about Joseph, so he ended up in prison. God helped him to interpret the troubling dreams of the Pharaoh's servants who also found their way into prison. One of those servants, upon his release, recommended the, the Pharaoh interpret the Pharaoh's troubling dreams, have them interpreted by Joseph. Now, with this great insight from, from God, Joseph, that is, he was able to interpret the, 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 the dreams that the Pharaoh was having, he was put in charge of Egypt, where he was a foreigner and once served time in prison. In other words, Joseph was exalted. So we find here in today's scripture... We'll do uh, one set out of Genesis and, and one out of uh, the New Testament. We see that God exalts those who bring him glory, and God will exalt those who suffer if it brings glory to God. So if you open your Bibles to Genesis 41, we'll start with verse 37, where we see that we will be like Joseph, exalted after suffering. The proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. Then Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find anyone like this, a man who has God's spirit in him? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since God has made all this known to you, there's no, there is no one as intelligent and wise as you are. You will be over my house, and all my people will obey your commands. Only with regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh also said to Joseph, See, I am placing you over all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, clothed him with fine linen garments, and placed a gold chain around his neck. So what we find here in these verses, that after suffering, Joseph went, uh, went through that he had, he had with his family, and as a slave in Egypt, he's now in charge of Egypt, and that'll position him to eventually save his family. Now, by not having a relationship and, and with and worshiping God, the Egyptians did not understand the God of Joseph. They knew he was powerful. We know this God as the triune God comprising of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
But they did not know that God, the God of Joseph helped and assisted them in the way that Joseph understood. Joseph had given the Pharaoh a plan how to prepare his country for the coming drought. Storing up grain, and then distributing it uh, during the good years, and distributing it during the bad years, and actually could, would be able to even sell some of it. Now, he already had, had a track record of success in Egypt. As a slave, he ran his assignment so well that his owner, Potiphar, put him in charge of his entire household. And when he was put in prison, his integrity and abilities were so well noted by the warden that Joseph was put in charge of the prison, the one he was an inmate in. Now he's in charge of the country that once held him captive. Now, why do you think Pharaoh and his advisors saw Joseph's ability? Well, the Lord has shown to others of what the Lord can do through those like Joseph who have faith in him. In other words, what Joseph could do was through the abilities given to him by God, and people could see that. They may not worship that God, but they could see that that God was involved. Psalm 37, verses 5 and 6. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. And where do you think this wisdom comes from that Joseph had? Well, the scriptures tell us in Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Joseph worshipped the Lord, Yahweh. This is what is meant by fear of the Lord. It's worshipping God. Submitting to him. Holding him above yourself. Now just as God the Father is the only one above Jesus, Pharaoh is the only one above Joseph as the Prime Minister. This appointment is much like the appointment of Adam after creation. Adam is in charge of ruling the land, managing it, but it did come to an abrupt end uh, just as Joseph's uh, did when he ended up being put in prison. Adam was dependent upon God until the great fall caused by the eating of the forbidden fruit. Joseph was dependent on God for the knowledge through, with, through visions. Now, just as Joseph's life showed similarities to the ministry of Jesus, it also shows similarities with the life of Adam. Joseph will save Egypt and his family from the famine. He will almost be acting as a ruler, with the exception of Pharaoh above him. Christ saves us generally and is our king. Revelation chapter 19, verses 11 through 16. And this is the, uh, the Apostle John writing this. Then I saw heaven opened, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and he judges and makes war in righteousness. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and many crowns were on his head. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe stained with blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies that were in heaven followed him on white horses wearing pure white linen. A sharp sword came from his mouth so that he might strike the nations with it. He will shepherd them with an iron scepter. He will also trample the winepress of the fierce anger of God the Almighty. And he has a name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The jurisdiction of Joseph the one that he had was over the entire country. Many, the, 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 rather the symbols and emblems of the office Joseph now held were given to him. This would have validate and verify he had the authority to do what he did when he went out to various areas in the country. In other words, with this royal seal on his finger, the special ring, the signet ring, it showed he had the authority to transact business of the pharaoh anywhere he went in the country. By staying in the faith during hard times, you are showing you are exalted by the Lord. You are lifted up. You are held up most high. When times get tough, some people abandon God. Some people get frustrated. In prison ministry yesterday, uh, most people come by car, but there's a small group of us that come on motorcycles. They work as a wonderful witness tool to draw prisoners to us so we can talk to them or be willing to talk to us to witness the gospel eventually. 
and we are now required to submit in advance registrations and photographs of the vehicles we're taking into the prison. Well, you know how bureaucracy works. Somebody messed up, and around six of the 14 of us, the photos never made it to the prison. They weren't there. They submitted them, but they weren't there. One had the wrong photo. They didn't, you know, it was upgraded to a new photo, to a different bike, but they didn't make it either. So, they couldn't bring their bikes in and use them as witness tools. However, with their loyalty to Jesus and to God, they realized those, those were just tools. We can witness without them. And they still went inside the prison and witnessed. They didn't just turn away. Now, in the book of Acts, we, we see an excellent uh, example of this. In chapters 3 and 4, we see where Peter and John uh, prayed over a person who was uh, crippled from birth, begging outside the temple grounds. And Peter commands him, in the name of Jesus, to get up. That's basically the prayer, in the name of Jesus, get up. And the man was instantly healed. Not only did he suddenly have muscle tone, he had balance, instantly. Now the religious leaders arrested Peter and John, and they were put on trial. After being threatened and forbidden to speak the name of Jesus, they were released. Remember, they were told not to speak the name of Jesus anymore. So what do you think they did? They continued to preach the gospel and mention the name of Jesus. Acts 4.31 When they had prayed, the place where they were assembled was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak God's message with boldness. So it didn't subdue their witness. They were empowered. They put the ministry of Jesus, witnessing the gospel, first in our lives, ahead of any hardship, such as being arrested, that had already occurred. Now, we'll go into Philippians chapter 2, verses 8-11. through 11, where we see the exalted Christ Jesus is to be worshipped by us. We're going to worship him. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even to death on a cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the verses are pretty much telling us that Jesus is Lord. Now these verses are showing the earthly focus of Jesus. People judged who he was by his outward appearance. You know, when you see someone going down the street wearing clothes, a lot of us will judge somebody. He must be a banker, he must be a, a salesman, he must work at a, a department store. But here, people judge who he was by his appearance, and he did not observe who he was by his insights. Who is he when he speaks? Who is he when, with the stuff he's doing? What is that showing us? Healing people, walking on water, calming the oceans. Knowledge above, of the scriptures above all the religious leaders, of all the credentials. How often do you judge people by their outward appearance? By becoming human, God incarnate, he had to humble himself. Think of being God and coming down here to be with us and not using your powers. There was more to Jesus than anyone could possibly recognize. And no one recognized him as God. John chapter 1 verse 10. He was in the world and the world was created through him. Yet the world did not recognize him. See, Jesus never demanded basic human rights. He didn't say, I want equity with everybody else. I'm just a poor uh, itinerant uh, rabbi roaming the uh, countryside. He never asked for uh, basic human rights. Instead, he accepted humiliation and persecution. He suffered additional humiliation upon his death on the cross, which was considered the most degrading way for a Jew to die. And it's also the most painful way at that time invented. The way the cross was set up, your arms or hands would be nailed or tied at an angle, to where it made it hard to breathe unless you pushed up on the uh, foot plate. So people would frequently just suffocate eventually because they got tired of pushing up in order to breathe. 
That's why they, when you read scripture, they broke the legs of two criminals to make sure they were dead because they would suffocate in just a couple of minutes. And, and the thing is, it was even worse in that for Jews, this is a form of death they absolutely hated. Deuteronomy 21, verses 22 and 23. If anyone is found guilty of an offense deserving the death penalty and is executed, you hand his, and you hand his body on the tree, see that should be hang, and you hang his body on a tree, you are not to leave his corpse on the tree overnight, but are under but are to bury him that day, for anyone hung on a tree is under God's curse. Now the Romans did not invent crucifixion. They got it from the Phoenicians and Persians. They just pretty well perfected it. It was so cruel it was against Roman law to crucify a Roman citizen. However, as we all know, uh, last Sunday being Easter, or, or Resurrection Day, death could not hold Jesus. John 10, 18, and this is Jesus speaking about losing his life. No one can take it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. The humiliation of Jesus, that is on the cross, and the exaltation by God are linked. Jesus got all the glory back he had prior to creation. John 17, 5. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before the world existed. There are several ways that Jesus was exalted. The apostles' early sermons affirmed his resurrection and his position with God. And another way is that their sermons alluded to his intercession for believers, intercession to God for the forgiveness of our sins, so that we could be in his presence and, and eternally in heaven. In Acts chapter 5, verses 30 to 31, Peter is addressing the religious leaders, same ones that actually uh, condemned Jesus, and he and John are on trial with them for healing that, that cripple. And Peter says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you had murdered by hanging him on a tree. God exalted this man to his right hand as ruler and savior, to grant repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Another way they, they talked about, uh, they showed Jesus was exalted, that they referred to his ascension. Hebrews 4.14 Therefore, since we have a high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to the confession. Finally, his new identity as God-man, basically. We see that in Romans 1.4 and who has been declared to be the powerful Son of God by the resurrection from the dead according to the Spirit of Holiness. So Christ Jesus received more than his glory back with the ascension. By having lived with us, he could identify us the way we live our, and, and also be an interceding high priest. Jesus combined the positions of high priest, God, and a rabbi, and a prophet. He combined all those into one. Had he not died on the cross, he could not have been elevated from the lowest degree as a human on earth, back to heaven as a sin substitute for us. The new name for Jesus, the scripture tells us, Lord, describes his essential nature, puts him beyond all comparison. We cannot compare ourselves to Jesus. We're not in the same league. This is a sentiment of the... Uh, in the New Testament, for the Old Testament description of God as our sovereign ruler. This is now this is what we see before the exaltation of Jesus in Isaiah 45, verses 21 to 23. The verses say, Speak up and present your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who predicted this long ago? Who announced it from ancient times? Was it not I, Yahweh? There is no other God but me, a righteous God and Savior. There is no God except me. Turn to me and be saved, all ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, truth has come from my mouth, a word that will not be revoked. Every knee will bow to me, and every tongue will swear allegiance. And that's written. 
I'm going to guess, seven, eight, or thirty years before Jesus was born. After the exaltation of Jesus, the scriptures tell us much more. Revelation 17, 14. This is about Jesus. These will make war against the Lamb, but the Lamb will conquer them because he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Those with him are called chosen and faithful. So eventually what we see is everyone will end up bowing down to Jesus. This would include angels in heaven, believers in him, demons or fallen angels, and, and the humanity that refuse to put their faith in them. And by the way, those that refuse to put their faith in them will have a journey to the lake of fire. Everyone will in time respond to the Lordship of Christ Jesus and will either willingly or blessedly uh, be a, uh, as a believer or willing, unwillingly or painfully as a non-believer. So, you can be blessed as a believer in Christ but eternity in heaven or you can be condemned to hell for eternity but either way, everyone will respond to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. By worshiping Jesus, you show your belief that he's been exalted to and into heaven. Now, Paul frequently shows his belief in Jesus being exalted by how he opens his letters. It's that simple. Look at his letters. Say he opens most all of them. As an example, 1 Thessalonians 1.1 1, 1. To the church of the Thessalonians, to the God in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He sees Jesus exalted. He's calling him Lord. Calling Jesus Lord demonstrates his belief that Jesus has been exalted. So we will be like Joseph, exalted after suffering. And the exalted Jesus is to be worshipped by us. How do you handle suffering? You go to God. You're the one that's exalted above us. The exalted Jesus is to be worshipped by us. So when you're suffering, take a look at how you're handling it. Are you going to God first? Do you still confess your faith in Jesus and when you're pers even when you're persecuted for your faith? If you've not prayed specifically for the Holy Spirit to come into you and specifically have prayed to, to, that you have accepted Christ and are turning your will and your life over to Him, this is the time to do it right now. Don't wait. May God bless you and have a wonderful week. Thank you, Pastor Michael. Uh, announcements? Um, none that I'm aware of. Pastor? Okay. Katie? Okay. Sunshine? I don't know. I'm just glad to be able to hear the sermon today. And, uh, I'm tired, but uh, full of joy and uh, just the experience of the power of God. Uh, I was thinking about um, the song you might sing might be, uh, there's power in the blood and you sing uh, nothing but the blood. Uh, nothing can wash us Clean, white as snow, and I was thinking about the words of that song and the truth, um, and how God used uh, words that might have been from that strong that song, which are definitely from Scripture. Yesterday, out of my mouth, when um, someone was talking about being the black sheep of the family, and that, um, you know, I was able to share with this person that because Jesus died on the cross, you are now washed in his blood. You are washed white as snow. And, uh, and it was his grandmother who is um, a church member, a Bible-believing church member, but sometimes... You know, we don't think about what we're saying, and she calls him the black sheep, and I said, you go tell your grandmother, you've been washed right. in the blood of Christ. And, you know, I'm so grateful for the hymns that you sing and the 
music that you bring, because every piece of what you do, whether it be to an audience of 50 or an audience of one, <laughs> besides, besides God, uh, one person, me, it, it helps equip me for the work that we are supposed to be doing. And this young man was saved yesterday. Praise and God. I just appreciate all the work of all the ministers, no matter how few people attend or, or pay attention. I thank you for your help in uplifting me and um, exalting God yesterday in Folsom Prison. Thank you. Well, Shonsan, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm, I'm thankful, too, that uh, uh, God uses you and uh, Michael in that ministry. That is a, a area of ministry that indeed needs to be uh, done. And we're very, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. very thankful for you guys. And, and just so you know, I'm so tired and barely moved or speak. But that, I believe, what, what I just said was also from God's heart to you. Thank you. Thank you, Sunshine. I felt the affirmation. I received the affirmation. And also to Kitty for being a faithful giver, too, and also for coming. It's also a message for her if she's there. She is. Thank you. Thank you, Sunshine. And thank you, Kitty and Michael. Okay, um, if we could lift up a couple of people in prayer. Um, I have two. I have two friends, uh, both named Julie. Um, we've prayed for them in the past with their cancer. Uh, one of them, their cancer has returned to the brain, um, and they're undergoing a radiation treatment right now. So, as the Lord puts them on your heart, I ask that you uh, please lift them up in prayer. And then uh, my other friend Julie. Uh, She's gotten through so many things uh, with the Lord's help. And now the latest thing is the other, well, last week she had an emergency ap appendectomy. Uh, and I, last I checked, she's doing well. Uh, but that, um, you know, as the Lord puts her on your heart, that you um, lift her up, that she continue to rest on the Lord. And did anybody have any other prayer requests? I mean, I know that God knows our hearts and God knows what's on our hearts. Okay. Um, our closing song is... Oh, you know, we're going to do the, uh, the invitation song. My apologies. Which is in any bulletin. Uh, one of the things that I just think so that's so important, which is why I'm including this song um, several times, is that um, we it's okay to come to God just as we are. You don't need to be perfect <laughs> to come to Him. It is as when you come to Him and uh, you receive him as your Lord in prayer, it's then that the Holy Spirit starts working on you and um, helping to heal you of all of the different things that are going on uh, in your life uh, and all those things that separate you from that closer relationship with him. The song is, uh, Come Just As You Are. You don't have to wear special clothes to come to church. You don't have to have your hair cut a certain length. You don't have to wear makeup. You can if you want to, It's but you don't have to. Come just as you are. Hear the Spirit call. Come just as you are. Come and see. Come receive. Come and live. Forever, life everlasting, and strength for today. Taste the living water, and never thirst again. Come just as you are, hear the Spirit call. 
Come just as you are. Come receive Christ the King. Come and live forevermore. Amen. For those of you who don't know the Lord, um, He's right there at waiting for you to just come. Come to Him. Talk to Him. Have a conversation with Him. There's no special words. Just talk with Him. He's waiting for you. Our closing song is number 213. We will glorify. Number 213. Thank you for letting, allowing me to get through the worship service without coughing. Thank you, Father, for helping me with that. Um, I hope that everybody has a great week. Love you guys. Come back next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Drive safely. Okay.